one of the biggest things in Formula One is beating your teammate. Every driver wants to beat their teammate. It's the one person who is in the exact same machinery as you, and no one wants to lose to their teammate. So what I've done is I've put together a list of who I think is going to come out on top in every team. Let's start with Mercedes, and I've gone for Lewis Hamilton coming out on top. It's hard to rule against George Russell because last year he had such a good year at Mercedes, his first year in the team, and he was super consistent. But I feel like with so many car troubles early on and Lewis testing things, and he got pretty unlucky with some safety cars, I just think that over the course of this season, he might just have enough to edge out George Russell. It's going to massively depend on how good the car is and if they're testing things at every race again because they've got it wrong. Red Bull is the easiest one of the lot. It's, it's Max Verstappen. It's not even, it's really not even worth debating. I'm sorry, Sergio, but if it comes down to Max or Sergio, it's always going to be Max. Over the course of the season, I don't see any scenario in which Perez is quicker than Max uh, with more points. It, it's hard to see Perez in most races being quicker than Max, really. Unless Max has some sort of issue, it just doesn't really happen. Max is always there and he's always on it. Max Verstappen will, will wipe Sergio Perez again this year. There's no doubt in my mind. Rounding out the top three, we've got Ferrari. And I've gone for Charles Leclerc. Simply because I think if Charles Leclerc can nail this season and not have any major mistakes, he was having a lot of silly mistakes last year, he will just edge out Carlos. I think Carlos had a great season overall. He made some mistakes, you know, early on himself. I think Charles just has enough to edge him. Alpine. Now, this one was probably one of the toughest ones for me because I think Pierre Gasly is really quick on his day. Esteban has already been at Alpine now, though, for a couple of years. He knows the inner workings of that team. So will he have an advantage? But just on a gut feeling, I've gone for Pierre Gasly on nothing more than that, really. I think this could easily sway one way or the other, but I think Pierre just has a little bit more natural talent than Esteban. That's what I've gone with. Next up is McLaren. I rate Oscar Piastri. I think he's going to do a really good job at McLaren. At least I hope he does. I don't see him beating Lando, though. Lando's a very highly rated driver. We know how good he is. We know how consistent he is. He's been at McLaren now for numerous years. We've seen other drivers go in there and struggle against him. Daniel Ricciardo being one. Is Oscar Piastri going to be another example of that? I think over the course of the season, you'd be pretty mad to say that Piastri is going to come in on his first season and beat Lando Norris. I, I don't see it happening. Next up is Alfa Romeo, and I've gone for Joe over Bottas. I just think Joe is starting to improve quite a bit, being a lot more consistent. And I don't think Bottas is, you know, slowing down necessarily. I think the Alfa Romeo struggled towards the end of last season when all the other midfield teams caught up to them. I just got this feeling that Joe is just going to edge out Bottas over the course of the seasons. That's what I've gone with. Then we've got Alfa Tauri, and I've gone for Nick de Vries. <laughs> Now, Sonoda's been in that team now, you know, a couple of years, and I do think Sonoda, he's a bit hot-headed, isn't he? And he's definitely quick, though. I don't know why I've gone for Nick de Vries. Nick de Vries is obviously coming in, highly successful in another series, Formula E. He's been a reserve driver for quite some time. Obviously, he stepped in uh, last year in replace of, um, was it Alex Alder Albon? He replaced at Williams and smashed Nicholas Latifi out of the park. I don't know. I just think that Nick might have enough. It could be a fool's errand this one. It could be a case of Nick's going to struggle in his first season and he's, you know, Sonoda's just going to outshine him a little bit and become the team leader. But I'm, I'm going to stick with Nick. Then we've got Williams. And I think this one is almost as easy as the Red Bull one for me. I don't see Sargent getting anywhere near Alexander Albon. I think Albon's now proven that he's a very, very solid racer. Uh, and he's now the, you know, the captain of that team, if you like. I think Sargent's going to struggle. I hope it isn't the case, and I hope we've got a pretty even field over the course uh, of the season. But my gut instinct says that Sargent is going to struggle. And even if he doesn't struggle, I don't see him being on the pace of Albon. Then we've got Aston Martin with Fernando Alonso and Stroll. And I, unsurprisingly, have gone for Fernando Alonso. <sighs> I don't really rate Stroll very highly. Um, I do rate Fernando Alonso, and Fernando, yes, is getting older, but he doesn't seem to have lost any of his driving ability or speed. Not yet, anyway. 
And with the news that Lance Stroll is going to miss testing because of a, an injury that he sustained cycling, that doesn't really bode well, I don't think, for him in the early part of the season. Now, what if he might not even be able to make the first couple of races? It was reported that he was he left the hospital in a cast on one of his arms. So I had Fernando Alonso anyway, but I think if you have a situation where Lance Stroll is going to miss a couple of races early on, then that's going to be much easier for Fernando to whitewash him, I think. Last but not least, we have Haas. Hmm. Now, this one's tough because Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg, I think, are quite evenly matched. K-Mag came back into that team and it was just like he never left. He had speed. He had the consistency. I think, sadly for Mick Schumacher, K-Mag was just better, wasn't he? He, despite the fact that he came in having not been in Formula 1 for a number of years, he came in and he just got off the ground running straight away. I think, though, for some reason, I think that Nico Hulkenberg, once he gets back up to speed, is going to be better than K-Mag over the course of the season. What I don't think, though, is that Nico's going to be fast straight away. He's going to have to come in, new set of cars, and he's going to have to, I mean... Three days of testing, one and a half for him, one and a half for K-Mag, is not a lot of time. All of these drivers have been complaining about the amount of testing. And George Russell used a really good example. He said, you wouldn't have um, yeah, Roger Federer hitting a ball around for 10 minutes and then going into the, you know, the French Open. He said, we've all been out of the car for months. Three days, one and a half across, you know, each individual driver is not enough to get back into the speed of things before going into a race so if the, if it's like that for the drivers who were in formula one last season imagine what it's like for the rookies or people who've been out for a while so i think nico might struggle early doors but over the course of the season i think he'll be slightly better and so there we have it that's my team predictions for 2023 i am eager for the season to get started and see where i end up when the season finishes